Good morning, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing Slow Motion. This is day three of the Everglades Challenge. So, as you saw yesterday, my wrist was hurting really bad last night when I went to bed, and it is really jacked up. Like, I can't make a fist that's tight. I can't push down anything. I can't pull. I can't push. So, I'm really worried about paddling out this morning and getting to where we need to go through the shoaling because I know I'm going to have to paddle through there. And there's a little breeze, so I'm going to put sails up and just go slow and ride it. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to use my wrist. I'm just going to have to take it really easy. So enjoy this episode. I'm not really sure what we're going to experience today other than getting out of the pass. Uh, we got 100 miles to the next checkpoint, well, 91 or something. So we get to the next checkpoint, checkpoint two, which is Chocolosky. And we're hoping to get there tomorrow or Wednesday. We'll see on the third day. So, all right. Talk to you all later. Okay, we are underway this beautiful morning. My wrist is not letting up. I took some Motrin. I tried massaging it for like a half an hour, trying to loosen it up, but nothing seems to work. So I'm hoping we can sail the majority of today and not paddle, same as tomorrow. I know I'm gonna have to paddle when we get to checkpoint two. So the more rest I can give my hand, the better. So that's the plan, just try and sail out. We're actually sailing at 1.8, so I want to go slow anyway as the sun's coming up because this channel's so dark, I can't really see much. But we should be out of here in, I don't know, an hour or two. So let's <laughs> see you on the water. So I just checked on Navionics and right now is at high tide, so this is perfect. So by the time we get there, It'll be flowing out and we should be able to just cruise. Hopefully the winds are, they're kind of in our favor, kind of not. But we should be able to wiggle through there, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, so looking at the charts, Gasparilla Sound has a 0.9 knot inflow, but the other passes going down the line have like one and a half or around there. So this is the weakest. Uh, inflowing tide, so I think that's our best bet. Check out that sunrise over there. That's cool looking. So this bay is too shallow and I just ran aground. So if you're going to go out of Gasparilla Pass, don't try and shortcut that little bay because <laughs> shallow the soundings are in feet not meters so when it says one it means one foot not three feet <laughs> so but um, back beside the channel I'm not in the channel uh, just because I don't want to be there's a lot of boats running through and we are about to make this bend and that should pop us out into Gasparilla Pass so we'll see how how we fare there hopefully <laughs> we make it Dang, I just saw on the chart that there's a fixed bridge blocking Gasparilla Pass, and it's 15 feet, and we're too tall. I'm glad I saw that, but now we got to hook back over to the main channel and go out over there. Okay, so the charts say that the bridge opens every half hour and hour, and this boat is really gonna mess me up here. Uh, every day's a challenge on the Everglades Challenge. Well, if I really tried to kill myself, I might be able to get there in the next 13 minutes, but I think we're gonna have to wait till the next turn. The camera really makes everything seem like it's a million miles away when it's not. The bridge is right there, it's just about a mile away, a mile and a half away, but. We're not gonna get there in 15 minutes. But when we get there, it'll be a cool video. It's this, the rotating one. It doesn't lift up, it spins. Okay, we're shortcutting over the shallows to see if we can make it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I like to push the limits, you know, so we'll see. But show you the bridge. 10 minutes, can we get there in 10 minutes? Oh, you're about to find out. I don't know if you can hear the bells, but they're dinging for the drawbridge. Uh, one, I just got passed by one Water Tribe member, and then I got two more right behind me. 
So I'm about to lose a couple places, but I'll pass these two up again for sure. And I might be able to catch that guy too. He's only, you know, a couple minutes ahead of me. But about to do it. Okay, it's making noise. I think the locks were just coming undone. We're just zigzag up to it. Should be good. Oh wow, that thing is silent. It's moving, but you can barely hear it at all. That's pretty cool. We got plenty of opening to get through right there. I'm still going slow. Now I have to open the jib. Get a little more speed through here. Kind of hard one handed, but got it. All right, make sure we don't bump into anything. Very cool. We'll just cruise right through here at a nice, comfortable pace. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind noise. We're hitting five, five, and six pretty steadily. So this is so much different and so much better than the last two days. I wonder how long this will last, but it's great. We're holding seven. We're at seven <laughs> and holding it. Six, nine, seven. <laughs> this is crazy. And we just left the, the Boko Gran whatever bridge right back there. So if you want to know where I'm at, we just hooked around and we're heading south on that channel. And we're, I'm going to go out at the Boko Gran entrance and get back out into the gulf right there. And we'll have a tailwind. So it's going to be awesome. Perfect. Yeah, we keep hitting 7276 and it's smooth. 77. Seven. This is really fast and nice. So we're coming up on Gasparilla Pass and I see what looks like a wind rider up ahead. I'm not sure if it is. I'm not sure if it's somebody in the race even. I mean, there could be a wind rider out here. Um, but I'm watching what they're doing and it looked like they were trying to go out and hug that southern shore and they made an immediate juke out to the center again. So I think there's either shoaling or a sandbar. So after watching them, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna shoot out the middle. And there's a, a buoy out there, a green marker buoy. And it looks like if I go to the green marker buoy, pass that, and then hang south, I should be good. But these waves are getting pretty decent <laughs> headed out. So I don't know if the shoaling coming in, meeting the waves coming out, is going to be something or if they're going to cancel each other out. But we'll know here within about a mile or less. Yeah, I don't know if I can capture how good these waves are. There's some big fat rollers. Pretty wild in here. I definitely wouldn't want to be in a, a kayak or a canoe or 
just <laughs> like this boat's fine because it's so big and wide but yeah I could see being in a different boat this would be a real issue but for me it's good we're fine yeah as we're getting kind of into the mouth of this there's some real shoaling going out it's, cr it's pretty crazy but it'll pick us up like right here yeah so it's taking us and kind of throwing us in the distance is too short between the the shoaling so we're getting lift up and then jammed up into the wave in front of us but we're still going four and a half knots so we got good speed everything's you know besides being bouncy it's comfortable and feels safe just another day This is Gasparilla Pass. Oh, so here's the incoming shoaling meeting the outgoing tides. So yeah, it's a little, little confused there. Not bad. See how the boat handles it. Woo! I was like hitting the brakes. crazy yeah that's pretty wild because you got that front water that's <laughs> like breaking like an e-brake and then you got the water behind that's shoving so yeah it felt uh, very weird but we still got wind in the sails and we're moving this is not for the faint of heart. I'm glad I'm in this boat. But the winds are directly behind us and I'm trying to go wing on wing and we're only at two knots right now just fighting the, the different currents. So, I mean, we're making it, but I would prefer to be a little further left and a little better wind, but we're still going. That boat that I saw ahead of me that was going through the pass is definitely a wind rider. I'm hoping to get close enough to see if that's meat delivery or the other, the white one, but it could just be somebody out, you know, weekender, but it's Monday at 9.30 in the morning going through Gasparilla Pass, so I bet they're a water tribe person. So meat delivery just called on the radio. That was them. Uh, they had some electrical issues. They had to tuck inside and figure out, so they got it all squared away and they're back on the road. So now the race is on between me, meat delivery, and catamaran. <laughs> we have lost all wind out here. It's just a calm day. It'd be a nice beach day. Just to be walking around, set up your little umbrella, hang out, dip your feet in the water. But out on the race, it's not as good. But it's a beautiful day. Got my sunshade up. Just sitting here going one knot with the current. And we're going away from shore, we're drifting out, but I'm okay with this because the wind is supposed to shift, which is what it's doing right now, and it's gonna start coming from the east and slightly northeast. When it does that, I'll be able to tack into shore, and I'm gonna have a very fast run in. So taking this current out, even if I do this for a couple hours, when that wind shift happens, I'll, I'll make up a lot of ground right there. So, and I think that Meat delivery is kind of doing the same thing. He's a little bit further out from shore than I am. So I think he's just waiting for the shift also. So we'll see. It'll happen sometime. Whatever I did to my wrist, even just holding on to this can is hard. Like it hurts all through right, right through here. I, get, I know a lot of people have carpal tunnel syndrome that happens right there, but I've never had it before. This is all brand new to me. This is rough. So my solar panel, my voltage gauge first is showing 11.9 and it flickers to 11.8. And I've been watching it drop. I thought yesterday just because it was cloudy that the panel wasn't producing. Uh, but today it's sunny and the pan panel's not doing anything. The charger controller is showing that it's charging. If I disconnect it, the charging light goes out. So the solar panel's sending something to the charge box. 
and I disconnected the wires coming from the controller and reattached them and that didn't change anything so um, it's just dead so I got to conserve power the best I can and including charging things up so but as of right now there's zero wind we're actually drifting slowly north and I'm not gonna paddle I'm not wasting that energy like I did yesterday I'll wait for the wind to come back and then sail and make it up. Looks like meat delivery and catamaran are paddling because they keep getting steadily closer. Uh, but it's really hot and stale air right now. Very humid. So I'm hydrating, I'm eating, and just getting myself prepped up for when the winds come back. Well, today was a day of lots of experiences. So we got to do the bridge, which was cool, the rotating bridge. And we got to cruise at seven knots, which was awesome. Not just getting to seven knots, but sustaining seven knots for a long period. That was really cool. Um, going through Gasparilla Pass, that was a ride, very interesting. and. When I was coming down, so Navionics told me not to go through Gasparilla Pass, but to go down further and go out this other pass. I didn't know what the name was. Gasparilla was a wild ride. When I finally got around to that other spot, it was like smooth glass going across it. But then again, it's smooth glass everywhere. So there's a little bit of an ocean swell, but there's hardly anything at all. We've gone 29.2 miles. The last four hours we've gone two miles so half a knot drifting for four hours so the sun's setting and i just i don't feel like just bobbing around out here like forcing myself to stay awake with like no gain at all so i think i'm gonna pull up here into it looks like some mangroves or something and just anchor out get some sleep if the wind picks up i'll get back in and go but I, don't, I see no reason to stay awake if I'm just bouncing. But I do want to show you guys the sunset. It is beautiful. This is.